All right, welcome to lesson 6.7. And today I want to show you how to approximate different integrals with something called Riemann sums. Now, I think I mentioned to you earlier in one of the other videos that sometimes you can't actually find the antiderivative or the integral of a function. And so if I asked you to find the definite integral of a function you can't find the antiderivative of, the question is, what do we do? Well, if we can't find the exact answer, the best we can do then usually is to approximate. And so we can always approximate areas, because remember the idea of the definite integral is really the area underneath the curve, bounded by that curve and the x-axis, uh, from the left, from the lower limit a, and from the right, the upper limit b. So to do that, and one method of doing the approximation, is to actually add areas of rectangles. And when we're doing rectangles, uh, the guy who came up with this, yes, his name was Riemann, so we call it the Riemann sum. So let's look at example number one. I'm asking you to approximate the definite integral from 0 to 10 of f of x dx. Notice I didn't give you a function. I did give you a graph, but the function is pretty ugly and messy. But I want you to approximate it by adding the areas of the five rectangles shown. So notice I took my interval from 0 to 10. I split it up into five rectangles, in this case of equal length. Each of them, I think, have a length of two. And then I said, hey, can you actually find the areas of these rectangles? Now, remember, a rectangle has a width and a height. And in this case, I chose the midpoint to be the height of every single one of these rectangles. So once again, it's the midpoint of the interval. And that's why we call this the midpoint Riemann sum. Now, how can we do this? Well, let me show you. First of all, please, 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 please do not write equals here. Because we're not actually finding the exact value. I need you to be aware that this is an approximation. So please put the approximate sign. Okay? On the AP exam, if you don't do that, that will be considered an incorrect answer. And so now let's take a look at the first rectangle. This one here that I'm going to color in blue. The base is 2. That's right. The height here looks like it's also 2. Nice. Uh, the next rectangle here. Hmm, the one in green. Uh, the base here seems to also be 2. The height here seems to be equal to 5. We'll keep going. Mm, this one here. The base is also 2. Mm -hmm. The height is 3. Uh, this one here in black, the base is 2, the height is 1, and then finally the last one, which I'll use gray. I can't really see it, but the base is also 2, and the height is 3. Okay. Notice that in each of these expressions, there seems to be an equal base or width of 2. So you could then just factor out the 2 and just say 2 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3. And if I do that properly, 2 times what's that? 7, 10, 11, 14. 2 times 14, of course, is just 28. So the approximation that I've done here with a midpoint Riemann sum gives me the answer 28. Okay? Now, by the way, uh, this little chart here on the right-hand side, it refers to this diagram. So I could have just found the values from this chart as well, instead of looking at the actual diagram. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Well, I can also do the same graph, but this time using what I call a left Riemann sum. So the question said approximate the same definite integral by using five rectangles of equal width. That just means n equals to five, so the number of rectangles equal to five. And I want the left Riemann sum. Now, my question, I guess, is what is the actual width? If I have five rectangles and the difference between the starting value and the ending value is 10 minus zero, I need to divide that by five to tell me the equal width of each of the rectangles. In this case, it'd be 2. And when I draw this, I'm using the left Riemann sum. So from 0 to 2, I'm actually using the left height. In this case, the left height is 0. So, yeah, my first rectangle that I have here, let's 
so let me write this out, is what 2 times 0, because the height here is 0. The left-hand height is 0. What about my next rectangle then? So from 2 to 4, using the left endpoint, or the left Riemann sum, I'm going to use the height from the left point here, so I guess that would be 4. Continuing on with the next one, from 4 to 6, I'm going to use the... That's right, left end point again, so even though this is an overestimate, that's okay, because I asked you for the left Riemann sum. And then for the next one, from 6 to 8, I'm going to once again use the left end point, which means a height of 2. And then finally, whoops, from 8 to 10, I'm going to use, yeah, the actual left endpoint, and this is a total underestimate, but it is what it is, 2 times 2. And when you do these calculations, once again, I can factor out the 2. I'm left with 0 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2. Uh, that would be what? 12. So 2 times 12. This gives me an estimate of 24. Now, once again, I never said this was a good estimate. I just said this is another way of estimating it. Okay? Definitely, this will be an underestimate because I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. But nonetheless, still an estimate. Okay. All right. Turn the page. Our third example today says, can you approximate this definite integral from once again 0 to 10 of f of x dx? This time using a right Riemann sum. And this time I actually want you to use four subdivisions. Okay. And I want you to use the four subdivisions using the data in the table. So you can see, hopefully, that my first subdivision would be from 0 to 2, right? There's my first subdivision. My second one goes from 2 to 5. My second subdivision. My third one goes to 5 to 9. Third. And then from 9 to 10 is my fourth. Okay? Now notice in this example, I'm going to note the width are unequal. So they don't always have to be the same width, all right? Given the data that I have here, I can't have them all being the same width. So I'm just going to use what I can with the data to help me approximate. So here we go. I'm going to ask you now to approximate the integral from 0 to 10 of f of x dx. Remember it's approximation, so it's a mm -hmm, squiggly equal sign. In my first interval, the distance between 0 and 2 is 2, so that's my width. And because I'm using the right Riemann sum, I'm going to use the right endpoint. So, which one of these is my right endpoint? You got it, it's the 2 value. So I'm going to use f of 2 as the right endpoint, so this would be 2 times 8. Okay. So note this would be f of 2, because I'm using the right endpoint here. Good. Next one, okay, so the next interval goes from 2 to 5, and so the width here is equal to 3, and I'm going to multiply that by the right endpoint, and the right endpoint would be the f of 5 value, which in this case is 2. Continuing on with my third interval from 5 to 9, whoops, from 5 to 9, from 5 to 9, what do we see? Yeah, the width is 4, and the height is given by the right endpoint, so that would be f of 9. That would be the answer, negative 1. And then finally, with the last interval, from 9 to 10, we have here a width of 1. And now, using the right endpoint, f of 10, that value would be 0. Okay? And then, so now we go ahead and calculate this. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 6 is 22. 22 minus 4 is 18. So that's my approximation here. Okay? Now, I've shown it to you with a graph. 
I've shown it to you with a table. You may be thinking, here's another equation. So I've got an equation. Great. I don't need to actually do an approximation. The problem is you can actually integrate this. There's no algebra technique to do so. So now we must approximate it. And I'm asking you to approximate using these instructions this time. A midpoint Riemann sum with three equal subdivisions. So once again, let's figure out our width first of all. It will be the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit. And we're going to divide by three subintervals. So in this case, oh, also equal to two. I'm going to ask us for the midpoint Riemann sum. So that means I want to find the height at the midpoint. So the midpoint of 0 to 2 is 1. So I'm going to use this value here. Doot, doot, doot. Okay. From 2 to 4, I'm going to use the midpoint, which is at 5. So f of 5 will be my height. And then from 4 to 6, I'm going to use, sorry, did I say 5? I'm at 3. And from 4 to 6, I'm going to use the y value when x equals to 5 to represent my height. So how do I write that out? Integral from 0 to 6 of the square root of x squared plus 10 dx is once again approximately equal to. Each one of these is 2 with the width. That's great. And then I'm going to use ah, the midpoint. So I'm going to plug in the value of 1. So this will be then root 1 squared plus 10. And that would be my height. The next one would be when I plug in 3, so it would be 3 squared plus 10. And then the final one would be when I plug in, that's right, 5. 5 squared plus 10. So if I want to simplify this, that's 2 root 11 plus 2 root 19 plus 2 root 35. And that would be the best approximation I can do. All right. So I'm going to ask you to try number five. I want you to read it, see if you can sketch it out on the diagram as well, and let's see if you can find the answer. And after that, yes, you can do some work. This is probably one of the uh, shortest of the videos in this unit. So we're giving you a break from a not a nasty long video for this section here. But come back please for lesson 6.8, as it will be a continuation of these ideas. All right. So try number five on your own, and when you're done, double check, and then away you go and to do some work. Now notice that, once again, five right-hand rectangles whose widths are determined by the intervals separating. So once again, they don't have to be the same. So I'm starting at negative 10 and going all the way to negative 4. So this is my first interval. It's six units long. Okay. So how can I write this out for us? The integral from negative 10 to 15 of 2 to the power x minus 8 dx approximately equals to my first width is 6 units wide. I'm going to use the right hand rectangle. So I'm going to use the right hand endpoint, which will be negative 4. Notice this is below the x axis. So this answer should be negative. And to evaluate this, oops, to evaluate this, 2 to the power of negative 4 minus 8. Okay. All right. Next rectangle. From negative 4 to 0. The width here is 4. I'm going to use now the right endpoint, which would be the x value of 0. So 2 to the power of oh, what's going on? 2 to the power of 0, minus 8. Okay. Keep going now from 0 to 2. Let me use green. From 0 to 2, I'm going to use, once again, the right endpoint. The width is 2. The right endpoint is 2. Okay. Then from 2 to 3. From 2 to 3, I'm going to use red. It's just, ooh, I said red. Why is it black? Red. There we go. So the width is 1, and the right hand endpoint means I use the value of 3. And notice 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 8 minus 8, 0, so that makes sense. Then finally, from 3 to 5, that's this one here. I'm going to use this. The width is 2. I'm going to use the endpoint value of 5. 
And there you have it. I'm not even going to evaluate this. Whatever you get is whatever you get, but this is the correct answer. Okay? Good? There you go. That's Riemann sums.